Amber Heard, a very performing narcissist. So we're going to break down Amber Heard's body language to finally reveal whether these accusations against Johnny Depp are true or false. Amber Heard has zero chances of making people believe that she is a victim. Her recollecting some abuse from Johnny and it's it's terribly delivered. There's way too much thinking, there's incongruencies. The entirety of her defense is predicated on a lie. The, and this that... video is going to be going over all the lies that Amber Heard has told thus far, looking into different things from her past that show a problematic pattern of behavior. I ain't saying she a gold digger, <laughs> but she ain't messing with no broke. <laughs> I believe Amber Heard not because she is a woman, but because when Johnny Depp tried to sue the son for libel in the UK, a high court judge ruled that Johnny did assault Amber on 12 occasions, that allegations against Johnny's status as a wife beater were substantially true. I have read the transcript of the UK court case and this is one of the most well-documented domestic abuse cases imaginable. Multiple professionals have confirmed reports of Johnny's violence against Amber. There are audio recordings where Amber is begging Johnny, saying that she thought he was gonna kill her. The last time that it got crazy between us, I really did think I was going to lose my life and I thought you would do it on accident. And Till It Right, a mutual friend of both of theirs, reported that on Johnny and Amber's wedding day, Johnny told him, We're married, now I can punch her in the face and nobody can do anything about it. Texts from Johnny's assistant state that Johnny kicked Amber. He has a history of assaulting people and controlling angry, jealous behavior in relationships. Texts that he has sent include a non-stop litany of misogynistic profanities. In one he said, I'll smack the ugly cunt around. Towards the beginning of his relationship with Amber, he said, Let's burn Amber, let's drown her before we burn her. I will fuck her burnt corpse afterwards to make sure she is dead. And later, hopefully that cunt's rotting corpse is decomposing in the fucking trunk of a Honda Civic. He publicly supports child rapist Roman Polanski. Roman Polanski is not a predator. And his best pals with Marilyn Manson, the man accused of the assault and torture of women. Despite all this evidence that so strongly, to me at least, points towards Johnny being a raging abuser, the global consensus seems to be that because Amber hit back, Amber is the abuser, or at best, the relationship was mutually abusive. But the concept of mutual abuse is largely not seen as valid by most domestic violence advocates. Every altercation between two people has a primary aggressor, and if the other person hits back in self-defense as reactive violence or as a way to reassert control, that does not count as mutual abuse. In fact, it is a very common tactic for the person who is the abuser to accuse their victim of being abusive. It's called DAVO. Deny, attack, reverse victim and offender so that the perpetrator assumes the victim role. They beat the wolf until it bites so they can call it bad. And yet all we have seen is a six week long misogynistic dogpiling of Amber as millions of people are subjecting her to the most disgusting abuse, humiliation and violent rhetoric. Hashtags everywhere are stating Amber is a psycho or Amber Heard is a liar who faked her abuse. Crowds outside the court boo Amber boo! and applaud Johnny, throwing gifts through his car windows. People are mockingly reenacting and fetishizing her graphic rape testimony. Social media influencers and Etsy sellers are using the trial to grow their following and sell fuck Amber Heard merch. People want to kill me, and they tell me so every day. People want to put my baby in the microwave, and they tell me that. 
it's been nothing other than a present day witch hunt with the masses trying to crucify her and all of this culminated in Johnny winning the defamation case against her because the jury ruled that Amber defamed Johnny by speaking publicly about how she was abused by him. As someone who has been to court to testify against a sexual predator who abused me, something that I've made several videos about, I want to talk about how this is re-traumatizing, triggering and having catastrophic implications for victims like me that will have repercussions for decades to come, how the narratives leveled during this trial are deeply seeped in misogyny and leading to the ideological radicalization of countless people and how this is doing untold damage to the strides that were made during the Me Too movement. To me, one of the biggest things this trial has showcased is how deeply conditioned we are to attack, condemn, ridicule, scrutinize female victims and their accounts. Every single sexist trope imaginable has been used to undermine Amber's credibility. She's a gold digger, a gone girl mastermind, just as Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby's accusers were said to be motivated by fame and money. She's a liar, an exaggerator, and if she was abused, she deserved it because she's insufferable. The same was said about Anita Hill and Christine Blasey Ford when they testified about their sexual assaults. She's a crazy ex, just as Woody Allen's daughter's molestation allegations were an attempt by a vengeful ex to destroy his career. Despite the age imbalance, the wealth imbalance, the power imbalance, we are quicker to believe that a woman in her 20s concocted a five-year conspiracy of abuse for financial gain, even though she never even tried to sue him, than we are to believe that a man was abusive to his wife. Johnny's team's closing statement was that Amber was intent on ruining a good man's name and reputation. And to tarnish him as an abuser is to destroy him in the eyes of many of these people. There are people who used to look up to him who now believe that he beat a woman, which is the worst thing you can say about a man. Ms. Hurd inflicted the greatest and cruelest injury of all. She publicly and falsely named Mr. Depp as the abuser. This is playing into the classic trope we hear time and time again that lets men off the hook for their actions, that no matter how battered, how raped, how dead a woman is, it pales in comparison to the absolute horror of tarnishing a man's name. Recently, the conversation around Me Too has been largely overshadowed by the highly politicized debate around cancel culture, in which focus on what someone is accused of becomes secondary to the theoretical consequences they could face for those transgressions. So essentially, the accused aggressor is recast as a victim. This cancel culture or this instant ru rush to judgment, I could promise you that no one is safe. Throughout the trial, Johnny's team also leveled all kinds of victim blaming tropes against Amber, perpetuating harmful myths around how a real victim of abuse would act. If you're really a victim, Amber, why didn't you come forward sooner, suffer worse injuries, have medical records documenting your abuse? If you're really a victim, Amber, why don't you look like, cry like, move like, act like a real victim whilst you're in the courtroom? And if you were really scared to death, why did you write Johnny love notes, give him a knife as a gift? Why didn't you just leave? The double standards of this case are also astonishing. Since Amber is an imperfect victim, she's not seen as a victim at all. Meanwhile, poor victim Johnny is given endless forgiveness for his countless transgressions. People are zeroing in on every minuscule discrepancy of Amber's testimony, yet the far more numerous and consequential discrepancies of Johnny's testimony don't get a mention at all. 
She's histrionic, mentally unstable, bipolar, yet wears the mental health diagnosis of the self-described savage, flesh-hacking, woman-pounding monster. Every gesture, every word, every smile, every item of clothing that she wears is evidence that she's a psychopath who's faking her trauma. But when he smirks, jokes, and eats Haribo's during her graphic rape testimony, it's evidence of his charm, his endearing eccentricity, or a tactic to manage his PTSD in a traumatic situation. At the same time, people are trying to hide and offset their misogyny by using Johnny's lawyer and psychologist as pawns. We're not really misogynists. We love Camille. We love Dr. Curry. This is what women should aspire to be, strong, powerful women. I can't believe this still needs to be said in 2022, but perpetuating girl boss feminism, tokenizing certain women who made it to the top in male dominated fields, and celebrating women tearing each other down, fetishizing girl on girl action, does absolutely nothing for gender equality. The impact this is having in silencing victims and radicalizing people towards intense misogyny and disbelief of women cannot be overstated. Incels, men's rights activists, fathers' rights groups claiming to fight for men's justice and equality are weaponizing this case to peddle misconceptions that women lie about abuse for personal gain, that feminism is worsening the lives of men, that Me Too is sexist and self-serving for women, and are calling for the end of the Believe Women narrative that feminists worked hard to bring about. They are claiming this is hardcore proof that men are under attack, that the criminal justice system is biased against men, Amber's heinous allegations were believed just because she is a woman, and Johnny was assumed guilty just because he's a man. These claims would be laughable if they weren't so harmful because the exact opposite is the case. If you look at the statistics, false accusations of domestic and sexual violence are exceedingly rare. They are amongst the least reported, least indicted, least convicted crimes that exist. Evidence shows that far from courts being biased against men, it's the other way around. The legal system was built by and for men, and the judiciary is far more likely to rule against abused women. One of the reasons the Me Too movement came about was precisely because the legal and justice system could not be relied upon. It was a way for women to fight back and warn others about their abusers. Believe women was a phrase meant to underscore just how rare it is for a woman to lie about her abuse and to encourage people to treat women who come forward with dignity and respect and acknowledge that on a systemic, institutional and global level, women need to be believed. And even if Amber were lying, we should be seeing it as an exception, seeing it as the rarity that it is, rather than using it as an excuse to disbelieve women and fuel the narrative that women can't be trusted. The idea that men are under attack also couldn't be further from the truth, since it's almost as if Me Too benefited men who were accused of violence against women. Louis C.K. won a Grammy this year for his comedy album in which he characterizes the sexual abuse allegations levied against him as consensual. And they say yes. Just say, are you sure? (laughs) Mel Gibson was charged with misdemeanor spousal battery, yet continues to direct award-winning movies on our screens. And Brett Kavanaugh was appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court. And what happens to women who come forward? They are subjected to unimaginable public vitriol, socially ostracized, professionally blacklisted, mocked endlessly on social media, and sued. Johnny's playing a gig cheered on by fans in pre-production for his next role, whilst Amber's career is ruined and she's hiding from death threats. 
And I know what people are going to say, oh, so you're saying that men can't be victims of abuse. Of course, men can be victims too. But it's important that we don't muddy the waters around the systemic and patriarchal nature of interpersonal violence. The majority of interpersonal violence is of male violence against women because we live under the patriarchy, a system that promotes male violence by giving men the power to control and dominate women. And for all the people who are ferociously supporting Johnny, how many of you actually care about male victims? It seems to me that you only care in so much as it can be used to fuel your agenda to dismantle feminism and discredit female victims. I haven't seen a single man try and encourage people to donate to domestic violence charities or promote domestic violence resources. All I have seen is endless vitriol hatred and smear campaigns towards women. Men absolutely can be victims of domestic violence and interpartner violence. But what I'm asking you is, are you considering in that equation trans men, queer men, men of color? When Terry Crews and Brendan Fraser were discussing their experiences with being assaulted by other men, where were you? Do you make prison rape jokes? Do you perpetuate the stigma that men can't be raped? When you hear stories about little boys being raped by their teachers, are you giving high fives and talking about, oh, that's not a big deal? When your favorite rapper talks about how he had his 13-year-old son getting turned out, are you saying that's normal or are you saying that's child abuse? And when you're talking about men and protecting them in domestic violence situations, are you aware that when it comes to queer men, their STI status can be used to keep them in abusive situations? Are you making sure you're not perpetuating that, the stigma of that? Are you making sure that you actually believe that black men can be vulnerable? That's what I wanna know. Cause if this is all for Johnny Depp, you ain't doing shit. When men are considered victims, there's such an outpouring of love and support. Poor baby Johnny must be protected at all costs. It's a classic case of mempathy, the disproportionate sympathy given to the stories, mental health and experiences of men. But where is this level of support and outrage on behalf of female victims? People seemingly care more about the plight of Johnny than the victims of R. Kelly, Epstein and Weinstein put together. And the anger and hatred towards Amber is far greater than any of the powerful men accused of far greater crimes, be it Bill Cosby, Prince Andrew or Trump. People are claiming that Me Too has gone too far when clearly Me Too has barely even begun. It seems that we've learned nothing from the public hatred we leveled towards women who were later re-evaluated, Anita Hill, Britney Spears, Pamela Anderson, because Amber is receiving the exact same treatment. It seems that we've learned nothing from all the cases of powerful men like OJ Simpson, who despite immense evidence against them, won the public and court battle based based on more charisma and likability because history is clearly repeating itself. Even when abusers do seemingly receive consequences for their actions, they are quickly overturned. Bill Cosby is out of jail on a legal loophole and the conviction of Harvey Weinstein could be overturned on appeal. This global misogynistic battle cry of the manosphere will continue to radicalize countless more men and do untold damage to the strides that were made by the Me Too movement and by feminism in general. I do not think that the repercussions of this can be overstated. This trial has undoubtedly terrified victims all across the globe, vindicated abusers and obliterated so much progress made in victims' rights and free speech. Victims are getting the impression that we need to remember every minuscule detail of the torturous events that happened to us to be wholly consistent to have mountains of evidence, impossible standards only a minority could meet. Victims are getting the impression that if we come forward, we will be permanently frozen in time. The worst things that ever happened to us will become the biggest aspects of our identity, the only things we are ever known for. 
Victims are getting the message that we can't speak publicly about our abuse, even when we don't name our abusers, even when the abuse has been proven by a court of law without incurring ruinous defamation suits. Victims are getting the message that no matter how terrorizing the abuse we received, it may pale in comparison to what could follow afterwards if we come forward, the mocking, the death threats, the humiliation, the bankruptcy. All this means victims will be silenced, less likely to seek support, less likely to report, as if disclosure rates aren't meagre enough already. Psychologists and refuge centres are already reporting that victims awaiting case hearings are considering retracting or pulling out after witnessing the treatment that Amber received. And now non-famous victims may be subjected to similar obsessive scrutiny in our own communities. What's to keep the average TikTok user defending an accused abuser from creating clips that insist the victim is lying? Depp versus Heard has made that both profitable and permissible. Victims hearing the people around them scrutinise Amber will be even further isolated and friends and family will be less likely to want to support a victim because they think, oh god, I don't want to get wrapped up in going to court for someone and potentially get harassed for it. Johnny's defamation suit against Amber appears to be an extension of his abuse of her. Johnny threatened, promised, promised me that if I ever left him, He'd make me think of him every single day that I lived. This is creating a legal playbook for other abusers to continue their control and power over victims by threatening to lock them into years of legal abuse and bankruptcy. Historically, saying that you were a victim of domestic violence was qualified as protected speech. But after this trial, that may no longer be the case. Johnny's live streaming of this event laid the groundwork for a high budget general admission form of revenge porn. An act in which the person with the power in the relationship forces the other to be complicit in the sharing and dissemination of raw, vulnerable, sensational moments for the consumption and entertainment of an audience. This type of revenge porn creates a culture in which women are left open to lifelong vilification, harassment and terror. Ultimately, this trial is about so much more than just Johnny and Amber. Future opportunities for victims to come forward are damaged and abusers all over the world are emboldened with yet another tool with which to attack and silence their victims. It's an ugly glimpse at a bigger picture. All of this being said, I'm not trying to present myself as better than anyone else. I have to admit that my first instinct was actually to disbelieve Amber. I really had to reflect and ask myself, do I really not believe Amber or am I just trying to be the cool girl, trying to laugh along with everyone else, not wanting to be the boring, nagging feminist? After years of invalidating my own abuse, is it difficult for me to have empathy for Amber because to do so would mean to confront the gravity of my own experiences? Is it easier for me to think that she's a crazy lying bitch than to stomach the reality that people could have this much ritual towards a victim? And is it easier for me to victim blame Amber than to confront the reality that violence is everywhere and can happen to anyone regardless of what we do? In the same way, I think it's really important for people who are supporting Johnny to ask yourselves, why are you so eager to believe Johnny over Amber? Did you care this much? Were you this vocal about the victims of Kavanaugh, Epstein, R. Kelly or Michael Jackson? Why does Johnny get your support but the others don't? Is it because you have some sort of pent up anger towards women and you've been searching for some kind of outlet? Is it because Me Too has meant you've had to reckon with how you've contributed to harm but instead of confronting that you find it easier to push it away and blame women instead? 
Is it because you're afraid some of your own wrongdoing will come out because if one of the most beloved actors of all time can fall from grace, then so can you? Is it because you're intimidated and threatened by women claiming their rights and speaking up because to do so would mean you have to relinquish some of your own power and control? I hope that in time we can see this as a radicalising moment that inspires us to push for systemic change, but for now I'm honestly just heartbroken for all the people who are hurting and afraid, for all those who are going to be dragged to court to be psychologically terrorised by their abusers, for all those who are going to die at the hands of theirs for being too terrified to leave. I'm sorry for all the victims who have been re-traumatized and triggered by this trial, pushed into an almost permanently disassociative state. You do not deserve that and I believe you and I'm sorry. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you may like my video on predators versus prison abolition where I talk about my own court experience and how that led me to become a prison abolitionist. On a little to the left, Nicole, Maxie and I are streaming about this trial. We also did a podcast on total liberation about the trial and Nicole from Pink Spots is going to go over all of the facts of the case on their channel. I don't normally like to ask for this, but I'd really appreciate if you could share this video in order to drown out some of the 99% pro Johnny propaganda out there right now. I'd appreciate if you could consider becoming a patron to help me to continue making videos. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so, so much for my current patrons for making these videos possible. 